Here's a video I made showing the installation of steel sheet parling. To begin with, you can see the rig being used here it is a very specialized machine for the very purpose of driving this kind of sheeting. But it's uh, not necessary to use a machine of this sort. You can use an ordinary crawler crane which was illustrated in the earlier slides. Here they've lifted two sheets. That's actually a pair of sheets. And of course if you can progress two sheets at the same time you can double the rate of production so that's an excellent approach. It's a fairly careful job trying to align one sheet with the, the next. So you can see it actually takes three people to do this. They've uh, managed to uh, join the sheets and now they're lowering the new sheets. Now you can see that there is no member lying on the ground to serve as an alignment device. They're pretty much uh, doing this by eye. Now even though the sheets are engaged, they're not uh, going down very easily and I think that's because the new sheets are plumb. They're hanging by gravity so they're quite vertical. But the sheets that are already driven are somewhat out of plumb. And as a result there's a, a real struggle in trying to get these new sheets to go down. As I pointed out earlier it's better not to fully drive the sheets to only partially drive them and then join more sheets to them because it's a little easier to try to adjust them as a group. In this point, at this point there really is no adjustment. The earlier sheets are fully driven and you're stuck with that result. So if it's a little out of alignment or out of plumb there's not much you can do about it but uh, simply join the next sheet and uh, hope that the problem doesn't keep growing. Now the new sheets have been joined. The foreman is trying to uh, get them plumb. Now he must sense that they're not quite vertical so he's advancing the rig a little to uh, try to get them uh, vertical. And once again, this is really, he is truly eyeballing this. Now he's lowering the hammer on top of the sheets getting ready to drive the new sheets. It looks like everything is okay but he actually walks off some distance to make sure it all looks plumb and comes back again to try to make some further adjustments. When he's finally ready, uh, look for him to uh, tap his hard hat. That's a universal signal that it's okay to start driving a pile. Now he started driving the pile. I'm not sure driving the pile is the correct uh, expression because he's using a vibratory hammer. So this is not an impact hammer. He's not driving it in the traditional sense, but he's vibrating it into the ground. It's very effective. You can see how quickly the sheets are descending. And again, he's advancing them two at a time. And still they seem to represent a little or no resistance. 
So he's making uh, excellent headway here. I don't think it takes much more than a minute to actually drive these two sheets. But when you figure all of the setup time and the time spent aligning, etc., etc., uh, that would give you a more accurate rate of production. I uh, don't think that uh, every two minutes you can drive a pair of these sheets. That will get you in a lot of trouble. Now you can see it's not a very big hammer at all. It doesn't depend on its own dead weight. It uh, derives its energy from uh, inducing this uh, vibration and it's extremely effective. I always hang around and shoot some additional footage or produce some additional video. You always want some extras in case there's something in the first take that you really weren't happy about. So now they've engaged the next two sheets and I'm glad I stayed around because there were some real surprises. Now the sheets have separated. No one was standing close enough to uh, get injured, but this certainly surprised them. And once again, I think it's because the new sheets are not riding freely in the driven sheets. They get hung up there. But the sheet on the right has no restraint, so it simply uh, came apart. Now. As I recall from my own experience, the foreman tack welds the sheets together so that they cannot separate. And I cannot take any credit for that. The foreman is smart enough to do that. And now you can see why that's really necessary. Now if I was here uh, supervising this work, I would ask the foreman to simply withdraw these two sheets and get them squared up again and tack weld them so that they cannot separate. It seems uh, enough of a struggle to advance uh, the pair of sheets, but when they're operating independently, uh, this has really created a headache for them. Now he perseveres and he finally is able to get the hammer on the sheets and he's now driving this pair of sheets. But you can see that uh, they are really way out of plumb. There's not much he can do about that at this point because he is simply uh, a victim of the sheets that are already in the ground. Now, try as he may, he simply cannot advance these sheets and he eventually stops. I picked up the camera and left. I did not want to hang around and just uh, record his struggle or embarrass anybody. But the lesson to be learned here is that you really cannot cut corners. There's no subst substitute for uh, good practice. And the idea of driving the sheets in a progressive way is uh, very advantageous and you can see that uh, the process used here simply led to some real problems.